I think they've got to finish this last game against Argentina really, really strongly. It'll be nice for them to round that out perfectly and, as you say, secure a second position in the rugby championship. And that'll set them up really nicely and confidently for the, for the end of season matches. Welcome to the seventh episode of In The Know, brought to you by Geo and Sporting News. Again this week, we're joined by Wallabies great Nathan Sharp. We're going to be talking a little bit about that fantastic Wallabies win on the weekend against the Pumas. And of course, this weekend again, we face them. Nathan, 27-8, great win for us. What were your immediate thoughts? Oh, look, just pride, I think. You know, one of the one of the things we spoke about last week was the ability to back up, you know, consistent performances um, and bank them up, you know, and and um, they did that in, in spades. And I think, you know, right from the first, I think, four or five minutes when um, Reese Hodge touched down, they, they put the Argentinians on the back foot and set the tone for the match. So just really excited by the way that they've started each time there's been pressure on them to perform well. They started well in those games and set the tone and, and continued to push it through the whole game. Well, if you remember, we spoke about Reese Hodge last week, whether he was going to be that answer at 15 with Tom Banks out. And I think he he silenced quite a few doubters, possibly including myself, with the performance over the weekend. Yeah, look, he's a really steady uh, pair of hands. And, um, you know, I think I think I might have mentioned that, you know, I thought Jordan, they should have given him a, a, a crack at the back there. But the, the way he played on the weekend, it be very tough to not pick him again for uh, another game. And I, and I think if you look at the way Dave Rennie's been picking the team, He'll give him another opportunity to, to perform as well as he did. So you know, there's a reason that he's played. I must he must have played sort of close to 30, 40 tests now, and that's because um, you know there's some really innate qualities in him, and um, he showed that on the weekend. So credit to him, he had the opportunity, he took it with both hands. Also, wanted to get your thoughts on the back row. Now we spoke a little bit about them as well last week, but it seems like incredibly effective at getting across the game line and really giving James O'Connor and Quade Cooper when they're switching out, plenty of time in attack to do their best. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. We, we spoke about last week, the, the the aggression from the carry and the way that they're getting over the advantage line makes all the difference to the backs out wide. And, um, you know, Valentini starting to really come into his own. I, I think that um, the Australian forward pack was very dominant on the weekend. And, and that's not that's not a mean feat, particularly against the Argentinian back row who are very established and well regarded. So. You know, that was an area of the game where Australia dominated again and um, it just sets the tone for, for the people out wider and, and, and gives, as he said, the, the 10s space and time to make decisions, which, you know, it, it makes it playing football a lot easier. I'm, I'm, I'm assured by Stephen Larkin and the boys that I played, with, give a bit more space and more time and they, they make better decisions. <laughs> The Wallabies had 10 clean breaks compared to the Pumas zero. So even the harshest critic of Australian rugby would have to admit that the Wallabies right now are playing a pretty attractive brand of, of positive rugby. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, it'd be remiss of me to say that they look really cohesive in attack at the moment. It's on the back of good carries, simple plans that aren't too complicated or convoluted, you know, outside of the set piece. Uh, kickoff pieces. The way that people are understanding their job is really um, starting to contribute to consistent attacking uh, performance. But one of the areas that we haven't probably touched upon, or, or the public may not have touched upon too much, is the defensive work of the team. You know, I think that um, the way that they've you know shut down and nullified South Africa, who don't typically play an expansive game, but nonetheless. They do play a British game. They try and go through you. They stop them from doing that every single time. And then you get to the Argentinians who can play expansively and they cover them at all, at all stages of that game. And they, they rarely look like scoring a try apart from the one they scored from a, a rolling mall. Yeah, it's a really good point because the Wallabies are using that, if you want to call it a whip defence or a drift defence, they're really using the sideline well there as an extra defender where you see... They've got someone like a Len Ikatao who's probably gone a little bit under the radar in terms of his defence. Getting out there, super speedy. He's getting those one-on-ones with the opposition, forcing turnovers or forcing the opposition into touch. Well, that's the beauty, isn't it? And I think um, you, you've hit that nail on the head, I think, Chris. You know, Ikatao is providing the Wallabies uh, an attacking centre that is incredible in defence. He's making really good decisions and he has the the capability physically to, to um, I guess, correct a poor decision by chasing those down. And if you look at the great teams over the years, you know, Sterling Mortlock for Australia, 
um, Dan Herbert for Australia, very good defensively in the centres there, and, and that allows comfort for those inside them that they're going to make a good decision and allow them to to stick to their defensive patterns. And I think what you've seen is Matt Taylor's really um, got the team working cohesively across that, whether or not they're, they're, they're up and up and in and got good line speed or if they're drifting out and, and, and pushing the sides, the, the teams to the sideline. Last week, we did speak about the line out and you mentioned that you thought they still had significant errors to improve upon. Was there anything that you saw on the weekend which has changed your mind about where the Wallabies line out is right now? Oh, I thought they were improved in the weekend, but uh, you know, once again, I think combination is going to come down to it. And they're playing um, some T1 nations here who have very good set piece, um, both in attack and defence. So I do like the the progression of Valentino. I think he's starting to um, operate more powerful in the lineouts, and and I, I, I like that a lot of the moves they're trying to pull together off the back of those lineouts are, are starting to involve um, Taniela Tupo as well. I think you've got to get that man involved in in any part of that, the game that you can. You know, his power is immense and get the ball in his hands. He's just got to catch it. That's all. You're right. As always, Tupo was immense on the weekend. Are you expecting anything different from the Pumas this week? Yeah, I think I think they need to start better. We touched on it at the start of last, before the last game and uh, the Wallabies just were very, I guess, complete at the start, and they they kind of disallowed the Argentinians getting emotionally involved in the game. I think for them, it's going to be a difficult one because they've been on the road for a long period of time. I know what it's like, particularly those teams from um, South America. They they want to get home. They'll either have a game where I just don't think they'll front up, or they'll really want to make a statement and, and finish the, the tour, which has been pretty disappointing for them in uh, you know some semblance of form. So. Um, for the Wallabies sake, let's hope they, they want to get on a plane, but there's, there's that potential they could turn up. And if they start that game, you know, red hot, um, it'll give them the sniff and, and they'll be right in it because they do have the skill and the capacity to, to, to put some of those games together. Now, as much as we don't want to buy into the hype, the Wallabies are in a bit of a roll three in a row. It's the first time it's happened since 2017. Looking ahead, we've got obviously the match this weekend, and then we've got the Japan test, and then we've got the three November tests. What do you see is the biggest hurdle coming up for the Wallabies? Oh, look, I think they've got to finish this last game against Argentina really, really strongly. It'll be nice for them to round that out perfectly and, as you say, secure a second position in the rugby championship. And that'll set them up really nicely and confidently for the for the end of season matches. Uh, Nathan, thank you for joining us for the seventh episode of In The Know, brought to you by GIO and Sporting News. And to everyone out there, hope you got something out of that and enjoy the footy this weekend. Let's see if the Wallabies can get it done.